The Dead Sea is actually not a sea, but a landlocked salt lake bordered by Jordan to the east and Israel and Palestine to the west. It lies more than 430 meters below sea level, making it the lowest point on Earth's surface. Its salinity is nearly 10 times higher than that of the oceans, so high that no fish, plant or aquatic organism can survive in its water. Hence the name Dead Sea. Yet this extreme saltiness also makes it world famous for its therapeutic properties and the ability to float effortlessly on its tent surface. Every single year, the Dead Sea water level drops by more than 1 meter. Since the 1960s, it has lost over one-third of its surface area. What was once a vast inland sea now looks more like a fractured desert with deep sinkholes, cracked mudflats and receding shorelines. The irony is striking. A sea that has lasted for millions of years is disappearing within decades because of us. The main source of water for the Dead Sea is the Jordan River. For thousands of years, the Jordan flowed freely from the Sea of Galilee down into the Dead Sea. But starting in the mid-20th century, Israel, Jordan and Syria began diverting the river's water for agriculture, drinking and and industry. Today, less than 10% of Jordan River's original flow actually reaches the Dead Sea. Without this natural inflow, evaporation, accelerated by the region's high heat and arid climate, has taken over. Another major reason lies in the region's mineral extraction industries. Both Israel and Jordan run large evaporation ponds to harvest potash, bromine, and magnesium, minerals that make the Dead Sea economically valuable. But these industries pump vast amounts of water from the Dead Sea into artificial ponds where the water evaporates and leaves behind the minerals. While profitable, this process has dramatically accelerated the sea's shrinkage. In essence, the Dead Sea is being drained from both ends, its inflow cut by humans and its remaining waters evaporated for profit. As the water recedes, fresh groundwater seeps into the exposed salt layers, dissolving them and forming massive underground voids. The result? Sinkholes. Thousands of them. Collapsing roads, farms and even parts of tourist resorts. In some areas, the land literally caves in without warning. What was once a booming tourist belt now faces abandonment and risk. The Dead Sea's crisis is not just about one shrinking lake. It is microcosm of our global water crisis, a story of overuse, mismanagement and competing demands in an increasingly fragile ecosystem. Countries around the Dead Sea depend heavily on limited freshwater sources, especially the Jordan River Basin. Water scarcity, population growth and climate change have made cooperation harder, even though the problem crosses borders. There have been several attempts to rescue the Dead Sea. The most ambitious was the Red Sea Dead Sea Conveyance Project an international plan between Israel, Jordan and the Palestinian Authority. It proposed pumping water from the Red Sea, desalinating part of it for human use and sending the brine residue to the Dead Sea to stabilize its level. However, political tensions, financial constraints and environmental concerns have delayed progress. While small pilot projects have begun, a large-scale solution remains distant. The dying Dead Sea forces us to confront a deeper truth. When nature becomes a resource, not a relationship, collapse follows. If the Dead Sea disappears, it is going to be very symbolic, as the lowest point on Earth may soon become a mirror to our highest failure. Our inability to share, conserve and sustain what sustains us. Saving the Dead Sea then is just not an environment act, it's a test of regional cooperation, scientific responsibility and human foresight. Because in the end, the death of the Dead Sea would remind us that what we do to water, we ultimately do to ourselves.